Listen, today's topic is second chapter rheology. Rio means flow. Ology means steady. Who's flow and who's steady? Both solid as well as liquid. Powder solid will flow. What about a hard solid? What about this one? It will not flow. What about this? Say I am exerting pressure. See the structure of this. What is happening? Listen here. I am exerting pressure on the table. So, what is happening here? Take rubber, bend it, it will bend, arise up, it will bend. So what that uh, bending we call it as? Flow. Not flow. Flow means powder flowing. Deformation of solids and flow of liquids. So that what we are going to study in this chapter. Rheology means study of flow of liquids as well as solids. In solid, solid will also deform. Solid will deform. So, rheology will see the bird size. Okay. So, we study rheology in application of force or stress. Apply stress and remove stress. You have to apply stress and remove stress. Application of stress is time taking or time dependent. We call it as time time dependent. Removal of stress is Time independent. Time dependent and time independent. Application of stress we study in three parts. Newtonian first two parts. Non Newtonian liquids which obey, obey Newton's law of flow, we call it as Newtonian liquids. Liquids which does not obey Newton's law of flow, thank you, are called as non Newtonian liquids. Newtonian liquids again divided into three. Sorry. Non Newtonian is divided into three plastic flow, false plastic, pseudo plastic, and dilated. We call it as shear thinning liquids. What could be this? This is shear thinning. What could be this? Shear thickening. Shear thickening. I will tell you what is shear, what is uh, stress. Okay. Then, removal of stress. We study like this. What is first one? Thixotropy Negative Thixotropy Then Rheofexy 
बलजस पर्स बलजस स्पर्श एंड अनदर थिंग इज मेजरमेंट मेजरमेंट ऑफ विस्कॉसिटी सो वी स्टडी रियोलॉजी इन एक्चुअली फोर पार्ट दिस इज ऑल फॉर लिक्विड देन वी हैव सॉलिड रियोलॉजी so we study rheology this is the birds eye view of rheology we study rheology in all these parts so first rheology is uh, firstly it is divided into flow of liquids and solids in liquids we study about this is liquids that is solid liquids we study about time dependent time dependent rheology and time independent rheology what happens if i apply force Okay, what happens if you remove the force? If you apply force, new liquids are divided into two. Liquids which obey Newton's law of flow is called Newtonian liquids. Liquids which does not obey Newton's law of flow, we call it as non-Newtonian liquids. Most of the liquids falls under non-Newtonian. Only your water, honey will fall under Newtonian. Then non-Newtonian is again classified into plastic they behave as plastic pseudo plastic they behave as plastic but they are not actually plastic then dilated pseudo plastic called as sure thinning if you apply force they will thin if you remove force they will thick sorry if you apply force they will thick there are liquid when you start rotating they will become thick thick and thick if you remove the rotation they will become thin there are liquids initially they will be gel keep on rotating it will become liquid leave it aside again it will become gel that we call it as sure thinning there will be thinning this will be thicken okay so this what is your rheology written i am going to rub this assume a pipe in which liquid is flowing assume a pipe in which liquid is flowing when liquid is flowing we can have imaginary layers imaginary real layers are not there you can imagine sir how to imagine that listen which layer will flow fast वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव विच विल फ्लो फास्ट इज इट वन आर थ्री वाई यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड इफ यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट यू वॉन्ट लर्न विच वन इज गोइंग टू फ्लो फास्ट लेजन this is what which is going to flow fast sir why this liquid will face resistance from the pipe wall this liquid will face resistance from the pipe wall so it will not flow same for this also same thing for lower also in between this will have more flow but the middle one will have more flow sir ask me why this slowly flowing layer will again put resistance on this layer but when resistance comes to this it will be nullified here also same thing see what i am trying to say is assume that you are holding a person 
this person is not moving fast obviously do you move fast no so we have another person here to whom which you are holding very loosely not tightly obviously he will go first then you go first then this person will move same thing so this is going first then he and then this that what is flow of liquids remember this we have imagine la uh, layers to create a equation so two things you have to learn here one is shear stress the whole rheology i'll be using these two terms shear stress what is shear stress shear stress denoted as f dash you can denote it whatever you want i'll denote as f dash it is called as force applied per unit area of flow not like this take jug throw water like this force you are applying where is the unit area jugs area is unit area same thing take bucket throw it as area increases the throwing force will be less because it is inversely proportional in a bucket of water if you throw you can maximum throw till three lines that if you take jug and throw maybe you go further back okay because jug has less surface area that what is shear stress force applied per unit area in direction of flow of liquids so shear stress is force applied per unit area in the direction of flow of liquids rate of shear we call it as a velocity gradient you tell me the equation now i give you the uh what is it hint velocity gradient when we use the word gradient concentration gradient fix law rate of movement of mass of dm by dt per unit surface area is directly proportional to concentration gradient here i am talking about velocity gradient hmm. when we use gradient word when we use rate word rate when we use by time a uh, gradient not concentration see concentration gradient we use concentration i am talking about velocity gradient what is fix law rate of transfer of mass per unit surface area is directly proportional to what tell me the equation for concentration gradient ah dc by dx per distance is called gradient remember don't forget this per time we call it as rate per distance we call it as gradient velocity gradient now tell me what i have to write here concentration gradient is dc by dt velocity gradient is very good dv by dx we'll try to study here what is the velocity of this layer what is the velocity of this layer and what is the distance between them what is concentration gradient is velocity sorry what is the velocity gradient is what is the velocity of this layer minus what is the velocity of this layer divided by their distance x1 by x2 x1 minus x2 so that what is dv by dx okay
tell me the units of this use force in dynes small force dynes per centimeter square dynes per centimeter square tell me the this one calculate and tell me what is velocity distance traveled by time is velocity divided by hmm, tell me what is that what is the unit did you calculate huh. second inverse distance is centimeter divided by 1 is equal to centimeter by second centimeter 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 will get cancelled remaining is per second or second raised to the power of minus 1 Okay, now we move on to Newton's law of flow. And then this, you know, it is recording, no problem. Newton says that, see, listen, what Newton's assumed is he not only observed your apple falling, he observed the throwing of liquid also. What he observed is, if you take water, if I throw with less force, water will travel to less distance. If I, same water, if you throw with more force, water is traveling to more distance. Traveling is called rate of, sorry, uh, rate of shear. And uh, why we call it as rate of shear? Because it is per second. Hence, we call it as rate. Traveling is called as rate of shear applying force is called as shear stress now you create the equation newton's equation tell me how how to write the equation more stress more rate of shear less stress less rate of shear hmm. what is the equation very good shear stress is directly proportional to rate of shear this what is newton's law that's all we just created it Newton's law of flow, not that law, okay. Newton's law of flow. Textbook you are. Oh my God. My examples are the Newton's law of flow. What is the statement of Newton's law of flow? Shear stress is directly proportional to rate of shear. That's all. That is the Newton's law. Of flow. And liquids that obey this law, we call it as Newtonian liquids. Liquids that obey this law. We call it as Newtonian liquids. Here on the statement that one. Okay. No problem. The equation of the new. And the example are, tell me the example. Water. Glycerin. Hmm. Chloroform. Solutions. 
syrup then very dilute colloidal solution then that's okay very very important examples in gpat water glycerin chloroform solutions of not syrup solutions of syrup which is syrup when it is diluted syrup is pseudo plastic remember syrup is pseudo plastic when it is diluted it will be newtonian very dilute colloidal solutions colloidal are plastic okay but when they are diluted they are have obeying newton's law newtonian liquids remove the proportionality constant put some constant as new this is called your what is this madam viscosity let us answer tipu page it pakra Leave. It should be there somewhere. Okay. So remove the proportionality constant. Put some constant new. See in textbook, some textbook it is new. In sub textbook it is new. Anything is okay. You put your own constant. If Abigna is putting constant, I'll put E. That can also be called as viscosity. Just for telling, okay, you can keep whatever you want, but you need to follow that standard only. new or mu anything we call it as viscosity so what is viscosity shear stress by rate of shear what is the units dynes per centimeter square divided by 1 by second so it will flip so dyne second divided by centimeter square or we call it in as poiss r Centi poise. Why we use poise? There is a scientist called Poiselli. He studied about liquids. So to give uh, credits to him, we use the word poise. Poise is a higher value. To reduce the value of poise, we divide it by hundred. That is called centi poise. Centimeter is hundred into meter or meter divided by hundred. Centimeter is hundred into meter or meter divided by hundred. It is meter divided by hundred. Milli divided by thousand. Nano divided by ten to the power of minus nine. Okay. Now. we will create the definition madam can you read out the definition viscosity is defined as first time kashta padutunna amma Force by unit area, while it maintains a unit defined in velocity, 
swing through parallel layers with a loop, one meter apart. ये वाला अर्थ में है ना? बाकी अर्थ में viscosity is defined as force per unit area, okay, required to maintain unit difference in velocity between two layers which are separated from a unit a uh, one meter apart, which are separated by one meter apart, will create it. Listen. Okay, no need of batting. We will try to create them. Please don't disturb me when I am creating something. I'll forget. It lasts to you. I will get my salary. I will get my increment. No problem. If I tell or not tell. Listen. This one is flowing with velocity v1. This one is flowing with velocity v2. The distance between them is one meter. Okay. The distance between them is one meter. So the dis difference in velocity is, let's say, ten uh, meter per second. Or because it is saying unit, I will maintain this one meter per second. There is a pipe. Liquid is flowing. We have imaginary layers in the pipe. One layer is flowing with velocity v1. Another layer is flowing with velocity v2. What till now what we have studied is viscosity means resistance to flow. That what we have studied till now from press two. Here some advanced. One layer is flowing with velocity one v1. Another layer is flowing with velocity v2. Difference between them, distance between them is one meter. And change in velocity is one meter per second. So, what is this one? Shear stress is what? Force per unit area. What is this one? Velocity gradient. See, now listen. I am creating the definition. Viscosity is defined as force per unit area required to maintain unit difference in velocity between whom between two layers separated by one meter. That's it. Try to remember this. Okay, force per unit area required to maintain. Unit difference in velocity between two layers separated by one meter. That what the definition is. Can anybody create his book? His book. I want you to create that. Whatever I just said. Anyone? Anybody? Don't bad. See this and create. Are you? Maybe you people are feeling shy. Tell in a group. You are good at uh, what do we say? Sheep herd mentality. Okay. Tell in a group. Ah. Force. Unit area. Ah. To maintain unit difference in. Velocity between two layers. See, sheep herd mentality. His boy, you are not together. Okay, please don't forget this. Write by your own. Okay, listen. What, how we created viscosity? Oh, 
what do we call this as proportionality constant we want viscosity is a remember viscosity is actually a constant but viscosity is not constant reason change pressure it will change change velocity sorry change temperature it will change change composition it will change what we name the constant which is continuously changing coefficient as this is called as coefficient of viscosity remember this is called as coefficient of viscosity from where this name coefficient came because we created by constant but it is not actually constant it is changing for everything hence we name it as coefficient non newtonian kill non newtonian kill okay next this is about newton's law of flow and viscosity so newtonian liquids are those liquids which obey newton's law of flow okay listen ah i forgot one thing newton's law of flow is this one modified is this one another modified is this one. if shear stress is directly proportional to rate of shear listen now you tell me what is the value of this one case one if you can tell me this it means you have understood clear case one i will take a jug what is the example for newtonian liquid water i will throw slowly it will fall there okay water has some viscosity i will throw slowly it will fall case 2 i will throw very fast it will move fast so what is the value of viscosity in first case and second case where it is more ha ah. don't i am trying to confuse you by my question don't go to my question what is the value of viscosity where it is more here or there both is wrong answer what is the third answer how water is changing viscosity you tell me how it is changing viscosity means what it is constant so for newtonian liquids the viscosity will remain see you take water you throw here or there water viscosity is constant na why it will change unless and until you add something in water its viscosity will not change to maintain that same viscosity what water will do is if you throw with more force proportionally it will increase the rate of shear also if you throw it more force proportionally it will increase rate of shear also in this way this is increase this is also increase so both will remain the value will remain constant so for newtonian liquids viscosity is remain constant whether you shear shear with less force or with more force viscosity will not change 
his bow these people are not together okay very very important gpat question same thing they will ask in which case it is more none of the above is answer case 1 case 2 both none of the above none of the above is answer okay non newtonian liquids non newtonian liquids first one is plastic flow hey listen very carefully i will explain the mechanism through mechanism only i will draw the graph i will explain the mechanism through mechanism only i will draw the graph okay example for this is flocculus flocculated suspension don't write listen please don't write listen to me carefully example for this is flocculated suspension when i apply shear stress to flocculated suspension initially this particles will try to go apart from each other they are together now they are going apart if i further apply shear stress if my shear stress is equal to force of flocculation what with what force they are holding up what i mean to say is it will come please assume these two people are particles form flocule ha ah, very good no 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 బాబు వెనక్ ముట్టుకోవాలంటే ఎక్కడికైనా వెళ్ళండి ఇక్కడ కాదు హోల్డ్ ఇట్ టైట్ లేదా దిస్ ఈస్ ఫ్లాక్యులేషన్ ఐ అప్లై షియర్ స్ట్రెస్ అలా కట్టిపట్టు వద్దే ఓకే సార్ డోంట్ లీవ్ అట్ వన్స్ పర్ఫార్మెన్స్ ఐ అప్లై షియర్ స్ట్రెస్ ఐ అప్లై షియర్ స్ట్రెస్ అట్ పర్టికులర్ పాయింట్ బ్రేక్ ఇట్ దిస్ ఫ్లాక్యులేషన్ ఫోర్స్ ఈస్ బ్రోకెన్ ఓకే దిస్ ఈస్ బ్రోకెన్ హోల్డ్ ఇట్ వన్ సెకండ్ apply shear stress at particular point the flocculation force will be broken this after this the particles will be individual so the force required to break the flocculation we called as yield value when a force is equal to yield value isn't what is the meaning of yield meaning of yield in english is okay assume there is a crossing you are going in a car there is a crossing this is crossing i am coming from this way if i come i need to yield see here and there then i need to go means what take some time take some time to go is called yield okay you got what i am saying when there is a cross section we say stop the car see here and there instead we can also say slow the car see here and there the slowing and seeing here and there we call as yielding yield at cross sectional that what the meaning of yield is so before flowing they turn to yield okay they turn to resist the flow for some time when i apply more force okay when i apply force after yield value only they will become separated okay i forgot to tell one thing rheogram rheogram is a rheogram 
this is the basics i forgot to tell the basics rheogram is a graph drawn between okay tell me where to take shear stress x axis or y axis known thing take on x axis unknown thing take on y axis when i am throwing the water i know how much force i am applying what i don't know is how much distance the water will travel so rio gram okay rio gram of newtonian liquids is like this in newton's law of flow you need to write this also okay newton's law of flow liquid that obey the newtonian uh, newton's law of flow what newton's law of flow says shear stress is directly proportional to rate of shear so shear stress is directly proportional to rate of shear when it is directly proportional when the graph is straight line exactly at the center 45 degrees angle so shear stress is directly proportional to rate of shear this is the rheogram for newtonian liquids this is the rheogram for newtonian liquids now draw the rheogram for this one see once it breaks the flocculi this will be newtonian flow i will explain mechanism once again listen we have flocculus slowly apply shear stress the flocculus will stay apart when your shear stress is equal to yield value then the flocculus will break they will be acting as individual particles once they act as individual particles they show newtonian flow how to represent this in the graph they are not breaking they are resisting the flow then see this is the graph for this one what is the graph for this one representing the breaking of particles they are resisting the flow so instead i will draw like this okay value okay so i explain once again listen what is plastic example example is flocculated system Flo plastic flow example is flocculated system what are the other examples madam flocculated particles in concentrated suspensions butter butter wait from in butter where is flocculus butter is a flocculated suspension of fats in water remember that what is butter in butter we have small small fat particles stick together take ghee in the ghee you can see the granules that granules are flocculus okay that one if you condense we will get butter converted into butter so one is concentrated flocculated suspension then butter ointments paste, paste gels. gels right down concentrated suspensions concentrated suspension butters certain ointment paste and certain gels okay with this example we, i will tell you listen here don't write now please complete it whatever i miss i try to get that one okay
we have flocculated particles okay the example for plastic flow is flocculated particles when you apply shear stress when you apply shear stress it will take time to flow the part particles will flow but they flow together after some time they will break so the breaking point we call it as yield value what is yield value is force per unit area shear stress required to break the attraction between the particles after breaking they will be behaving as individual particle and they will follow newton newtonian flow how to represent this in the graph shear stress rate of shear so i am applying shear stress there is no flow after some time there will be flow there will be curve and there will be straight line i write like this okay actually it is like this okay first there will be curve then there will be straight line now extrapolate this graph extrapolate the graph what i mean so extrapolate is listen if any graph is going like this if i say extrapolate the straight line should meet wherever it is meeting so extrapolate the graph the graph will touch some point at the x axis that point is called yield value small f after this yield value whatever the flow is there that is newtonian flow that how we need to represent okay total flow minus yield value is your newtonian flow divided by rate of shear is called plastic viscosity u we call it as plastic viscosity so please in exam first you write this one then you write the graph then you write the equation then you explain by seeing this mechanism what is the mechanism when shear stress is applied the particles are attracted towards each other they won't flow when shear stress reaches the yield value there you write definition of yield value yield value is defined as shear stress required to break the attraction between the particles when shear stress reaches the yield value particles will break apart and they behave as individual particles and they will follow newton's newtonian flow how to represent this in the graph graph for some time don't draw the graph okay see here the value is increasing only in x axis there is no increase in y axis means what they are not moving particles by themselves they are not moving apart when your value is equal to yield value they will move apart and they will follow newtonian flow so for all the things newton's law of flow also you need to write this equation then you write this graph newtonian liquids for non non newtonian liquids mechanism graph equation explanation follow like this okay we'll stop here. any doubts